What's up everybody, Andrew Mahoney here with Darian's Pokemon. Gonna be playing a game on PTCGO today, and today I'm rocking John Roberts Tapu Bulu Vigavolt list. John Roberts was able to finish in the top 32 of the Consville Regional Championship with this list. It's a pretty unique list, as are most of John Roberts' lists lately. A lot of his Vika Bulu lists play far less supporters than I think most Vika Bulu lists do. And in fact, I mean, he definitely plays less supporters than I like to play in these lists. I really like to play as many supporters as I can, and it really sketches me out not playing a high count of draw supporters. But John Roberts has consistently finished in the top 32 of tournaments in both formats, with Tapu Bulu Vika Vault. I mean, the guy knows the deck pretty well and is a very successful player in his own right. He actually is a national championship. He's a national champion. He won the U.S. National Championships a few years back with a very creative Kling Klang deck. It was this crazy deck. Played Plasma Kling Klang and then this like other Kling Klang that you could move energies around. The Plasma Kling Klang made it so that all your metal Pokemon could not be damaged by Pokemon EX. And there's this other like shift gear Kling Klang that allowed you to move your energy around. So it was a super crazy deck and it played like Max Potion. You move your energy around, heal the Kling Klangs, and then just like continue attacking. Definitely a wild deck. So, looks like I am playing against Galissapod Zorark with a pseudo Wudo Watch and Learn. Alrighty, fantastic. I Let's see, what do I got going on here? I do got Lele for Bridget. That seems like the play here. Now, unfortunately, I did get paralleled. Uh, this is not good for what we got going on here. So, uh, I think I do go ahead and get my Bridget, though, and I play my Bridget, and I get probably two Grubbin, I'd have to say, right? Like, two Grubbin seems the most reasonable. And then I think I, like, do this weird thing where, yeah, I think I... Do I only have one Grubbin in deck? Oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. For sure. Not good. All right. Let's get then what we could get Mew and Grubbin. We could get Tapu Coco. Let's get Tapu Coco and Grubbin. Let's do that. And what we're going to do is we're going to escape rope into our own Tapu Coco. So that's cool because it kind of actually messes with my opponent a little bit. It makes it so that they can't just like easily get a turn to first impression with their own Wimpod. It forces them to switch. So that's neat. I do like that. And then also. What I'm doing is I'm kind of like beckoning my opponent to like knock out this Tapu Coco. I get somebody out of danger. I like that. Nope. Okay. They just got the knockout on my Grubbin. That's great. Oh, they don't have the knockout on my Grubbin. They are just going to start flying, flipping away. That is very frustrating. Okay. We do have a turn to Vika Volt here, but at what cost? I mean, like I can't get this thing out of the active position. I'm locked up because I cannot put the Tapu Lele on the bench. We were just hoping that my opponent did not have that play this turn. I could Ultra Ball away the Choice Band and a Lele. That doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense. I think I, goodness, this is quite a mess, isn't it? I think I just have to, I think I have to Ultra Ball away. Yep, the Choice Band and the Lele. Oh, goodness. Yeah, that doesn't feel good, but I think that's what I have to do. And I think I get the Vikavolt, and I have to just evolve it and start charging things up. I think that's what I have to do. So let's go ahead and start going to town and see what's happening. We can attach that lightning to the Vikavolt. We can attach it to the Bulu and then charge one to the Bulu, one to the Vikavolt. I could just charge two to the Bulu right now. Like, that seems fine. And then uh, next turn, I could potentially attach and then retreat the Vikavolt. And maybe, uh, yeah, let's just charge them right here. And then I think, like, with the Bulu charged up, I'm fine. And maybe I attach one to the Vikavolt and pass. But I, I think I'm just going to pass in case my opponent doesn't have anything else going on. Now, if they have a draw supporter in hand, no, they don't, okay? So I was I was kind of right there. They don't have too much going on. The, the 
the uh, the Guzma play seems to be their play. That's that's all they had. So now we are going to strong charge to the Vika Volt here, and I am going to just retreat and probably just judgment this thing. So let's just retreat. This feels very wasteful, but I feel like this is probably our best bet right now. Uh, not judgment. We're just going to wilderness this thing, heal ourselves so that there's no sort of shenanigans going on with being first impression for knockout or anything like that. And we got one of our two Cynthia. So we appear to be out of the woods here, even with a rough start. I wonder if my opponent, oh, they did get an N finally. So they got our, themselves an N. That's fine. I'll take the N. That's, you know, a five card hand versus a two card hand. So I am okay with that. Unfortunately, I have my bench jammed still, but I think what I can maybe do is just Skyla for Field Blower to get rid of that Parallel City, which definitely feels like something I need to do in order to be successful this game. My opponent's playing Puzzle of Time. Are they playing one or two? They're playing one or two. I can never tell. It looks like they played two, and they got the Coco and a DCE back. And they're probably going to hit into my Tapabulu here. So I am a little conflicted because I could Skyla for a choice band and knock this guy out. But that does not feel good because I need to get I need to get another uh, bench spot, I feel like. But I guess I don't need another bench spot because I could probably do just fine without it. Uh, my opponent is definitely going to be able to get a Pokemon to knock me out next turn. I'm just trying to think. Like, I wish I could start charging up a secondary attacker with this Bulu. Uh, I think I could Skyla for a Field Blower, start to set up another Pokemon, maybe Remoraid. And then I could finish this thing off with a... All right, so let's, let's Skyla here. I think I'm going to get the Field Blower while I'm in here. And then I think I'm going to discard and then plan on maybe finishing that thing up with the Tapu Coco. That seems like that's going to be my play, like just to get the most solid board position I can. Uh, what, 180? Oh, then I would need a choice band on the Tapu Coco. That's fine. I could eventually get a choice band on a Tapu Coco. So let's just feel blower. I feel like it's just going to go badly for me if I don't set something else up right now. So... I'm going to start to set up a maybe, yeah, let's just start to set up that Remoraid. So let's get that thing going. I think in order to set up the Remoraid, I could get rid of the Guzma or the Mew or the Mew or the Vika Volt. I think I probably get rid of the Guzma. Uh, let's get rid of the Mew and the Vika Volt. That's fine. Yeah, we'll get rid of them. And I do have a Vika Volt left in the deck. So I'll get the Remoraid, and now I'm keeping myself a Guzma as well in case my opponent does decide to retreat this Zorark or something like that. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and Strong Charge as well and just throw those on the Coco right now. And then it's going to be my intention to kind of sweep up this Zorark here with the Coco. So like, yes, I'm going to discard, do 180 damage, and then we're going to hope that we draw into a choice band or some sort of fury belt or something just so that we can do 30 damage to finish off this orc in the active position now if my opponent does have an acerola yeah i'm probably going to be a little bit salty about that that definitely would not be good if my opponent has acerola my opponent does have some pretty dope looking rainbow rares though so shout out to my opponent for having nice rainbow rare Galisopod, nice rainbow rare Zorark. Definitely appreciate the bling action going on on the other side of the field. It's nice to look at. I am still, as you can see, kind of learning the ways of Bulu. It's not a deck that I play all the time, and there definitely is like, you know, optimal ways to play it. John is very good at this deck and definitely knows all the ro optimal routes to play all the time. He definitely tests with this deck a lot. So. Uh, it, let's see, what are they going for with Guzma? Okay, they're going for the Vika Volt. They can actually knock it out. So that is super stressful. Uh, that definitely is stressful. And I actually don't know, uh, I don't know if I have another Grubbin. I think 
did I prize my other grub in, right? So I do not have access to it right now, which is like really bad. <laughs> like really, really bad. They went for the juggler there and I think I prized it. So I'm not exactly sure, but let's, let's see here. I would like to Guzma up the Zorark and knock that out. So I think I have to go for it. Like I don't, I think I just have to. So let's retreat into Octillery and then just Guzma that thing up. I think we have to go for the two prizes here, especially to get ourselves a Grubbin out of the discard pile. So let's just see if we get one of our tools. We play a lot of them. So yep, we did get the choice band. And then let's just scout this deck out real quick and see what we got in here. Heavy Ball, do we actually have... No, we do not have Grubbin. This is like really bad. So I could, I could grab another Bulu, that's fine. But we do not have access to Grubbin. We prize too many. And now we are just in a tough spot and hoping that we rip some off of this flying flip for knockout. All right, going down to three prizes. Can we get ourselves a Grubbin to potentially save the day? We can. All right, so we got a Grubbin and a draw supporter. So long as my opponent does not just knock out this Grubbin when I place it down, we'll be okay. But this turn, they are knocking all of my energy out of play. So they are going to take out this Coco here. And that is really, really not good at all. And then taking out my my Vika Volt there was definitely taking the legs right out from under me. I couldn't even prepare my board with another Grubbin because I happened to prize two. It's definitely just, you know, that's just, to me, that's like the nature of a stage two deck. This is why I really have been trying to shy away from stage two decks lately just because I feel like little things can go wrong and just like ruin your day. So let's see, they just went up, decided to attack my Coco here. I think they'll have, f what, four prizes remaining. I could just sack this active Bulu here. I think I just make them have a Guzma though. Like that probably seems like the most reasonable thing to do is just like force them to have a Guzma. I don't want them to take, you know, I don't want them to take two prizes. So let's try to do that. And then I think I bench this here. I definitely bench my own Grubbin. That's good. And then I could Ultra Ball. I could Ultra Ball some things away, but I probably want to save the Ultra Ball to help get my Vika Volt into play. I could end my opponent, but that's not really going to make a big difference. I feel like I just am better off using Cynthia instead just to draw some more cards. So let's just Cynthia. I don't. My opponent didn't really have much in their hand last turn. So we are just going to do that. Then we can hit up this energy recycler to goodness knows we need that to get some of these energies back into the deck. I could play the second one. That probably makes the most sense just because we still got three down and we're just going to like thin the deck a little bit. And I think we just got to hope that my opponent like does not get Guzma, but I think we got to hit into this thing just in case they do have guzma definitely for sure yeah let's just energy recycler again throw these things in and then we are going to just abyssal two and draw three cards maybe we can get like i don't know heavy ball mew switch this is all fine but none of it's necessarily going to help us right now the heavy ball rare candy is great so long as they don't have guzma in hand but if they have Guzman in hand, you know, we are in a world of pain if they do have Guzman in hand. They, I guess they, yep, they even have a free retreater. They have two trades to get it done. And if they get themselves a third Zork, they're going to have three trades in order to go and find that. They only have one Guzma. Oh, they have two Guzmas in the discard pile. They also have two puzzles in the discard pile, I believe. Yep, so hopefully, I don't know, hopefully they prized a puzzle or something. Just hopefully they don't find this Guzma. But these decks tend to play a lot of Guzma, I mean, at least three. Uh, is that a double puzzle? Or is that saying it's got to be a double puzzle? they got to be going for Guzma here. This is just so rough. Oh, my goodness. And I don't have access to another Grubbin. That's it. They paralleled me early. That hurt. I prized a Grubbin. 
that hurt. There's just nothing here going my way. I, I mean, obviously, in a Bulu deck, you want to bench two Grubbin at the same time so that even if one does get knocked out, you still can charge your guys up. And the one turn that I was able to get uh, another, like kind of a backup strong charge play, uh, it wasn't it wasn't to anybody significant. It was to Tapu Coco. Obviously, I want to be able to strong charge to a clean Bulu there, but I just couldn't get it done. So, oh, the max potion comes down to that really hurts. My opponent's going to an odd prize count, but I don't think it probably even matters right now. I don't think that John Roberts plays any sort of Pokemon recovery, so I don't really have a way to get that back either i have to promote something that's like kind of low-key tough for my opponent to knock out though i feel like oh my goodness i i really can't do anything 30 damage isn't knocking anything out this is just so rough i feel like i need to attach an energy to my bulu here and hope that my opponent whiffs a knockout on whatever they're trying to knock out so i think we just promote the tapu lele um and then i think we have to attach to this bulu and then i think we have to what ultra ball for lele and n is that what we have to do we have to like just say like we're definitely not getting like we're definitely not getting ourselves a a Vika Volt this game like I think we got to just chalk that up to a loss and we don't even have a Lele in deck either oh my goodness that you yeah, have my other ones in the discard pile so that's my bad let's see I don't really have any other options though like there's nothing I kind of have to ultra ball just to thin my hand down for Octillery so I think I could get another Vika Volt or another Tapu Bulu and then I can switch into the Tapu Bulu, the fresh Tapu Bulu. Like, that seems fine. Then do I have a Guzma in my deck still or a Switch? No, I do have one Guzma left in deck. Okay. So I can play Switch into the fresh Bulu, which seems fine. Uh, so let's just go ahead and do that. And then we got to hope that, what, we draw into an N if we even have one left in deck. I guess we do. All right, so we got a shot. Let's see if we can hit this N here. We can't, so <laughs> that's that's fine. Uh, we do have Skyla, and we have Bridget. So I think I just Skyla for a Guzma, and we hope for the best. That seems like the game plan here. I don't really see any other way around this. I think we got to just hope that my opponent whiffs the knockout and that I could take my last three prizes with the one Bulu, and that's it. So let's just pass and hope for the best. I mean, I think we've done everything we can here, guys. When you prize this many Grubbins, it's really just you put the ball in your opponent's court. There's only so much you could do. I don't think that I could have kept this game from going downhill too many ways just without access to my grubbins like that without access to any sort of recovery card it's just uh, i'm at the whim of my opponent knocking out my my guy here so if my opponent does guzman me up and get a hit off uh on you know into my okay they ace a rollud so they're getting another trade but that's that's it. So I am going to be able to Guzma and knock something out next turn. But I have to. Oh my goodness, this is this is bad. I think they're not taking a knockout this turn. So I do have the option. I think. Oh my goodness, and then if my opponent. Oh my goodness, they could they could use the pseudo wudo watch and learn if I really knock something out. So I feel like I need to Guzma up and knock out the watch and learn pseudo Wudo. Like I think that that probably is the play, which feels crazy, but I think that's like the play because then my opponent, if I uh, if I don't knock out the pseudo Wudo, they probably just slap their one up counter energy down and then just take me out. So I think I need to take it out without discarding. And then I have to hope that I could just discard and knock out 
whoever next turn you know and just hope that i don't get knocked out back and that's just the move here so i think that there's no other way out i'm just going to abyssal for one playing only two copies of guzma just seems so rough i can't this this just i'm sorry john i don't know how you do it you must play your cards absolutely perfectly man i don't leave myself enough room for <laughs> i think i leave i don't leave myself uh you know, I, there's like no margin of error. Every single card in here has to be played the exact right way because there are no padded counts of any cards in this list. So we are going to Nature's Judgment, no discard. And then the hope is that my opponent now, you know, I guess they have to promote an EX. If they hit into me with an EX, I win. So they probably go up with a Tapu Koko and flying flip with a Tapu Koko but then I'm in a horrible spot because I don't have a third Guzma. So, like, I really just can't win the game because I don't have that third Guzma in deck, which is just seems really rough. I have no idea how John went all the way with only two copies of Guzma, especially in a deck like Tapu Bulu that just, like, loves to take out, like, Guzma Lele for game. That's just, like, something it loves to do. So I, I definitely felt like I had to take out that there. I could not have afforded to take out a GX or an EX. Like if I take out a Galissapod, then my opponent comes up with the, t the pseudo Wudo counter energy, watch and learns me. And then I just lose because I've got like nothing left on my, in my bench, you know, and I can't knock out that pseudo Wudo. It's weak to water. So I think I just, and my opponent flying flips, if they flying flip, I can knock out the Coco again, but they have an opportunity. I think I think what I have to do, I've already GX. I think what I have to do is like what field blower my own my own choice band and attach fighting fury belt and then attack into it that way. Like that seems horrible too. Like that way it would make it a little bit more difficult for my opponent to knock out my Bulu if my you know, I gotta assume that they're stacking like a DC choice band or something like that to really sweeten their damage output here. But I just feel like I'm just in way too deep here without a Vika Bolt. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, they feel blowered me themselves. Okay. So what are they going to... I have to imagine that they flying flip. Oh, they're going to armor press for 130. That's actually a really... That's a really nice play. I actually... I do like that. Okay. So they're going to armor press. That's fine. They know that I'm not hitting the numbers that I need to hit in order to knock this thing out. But it does kind of leave a door open for me, I feel like, because I could just like finish this thing off with a Lele if I have to, which is like super interesting. So let's just go ahead and do that then. And I think I'm going to put the Fury Belt, I feel like I have to put the Fury Belt on my, I put it on the Bulu then that doesn't really make a difference. I think I have to put it on my Lele maybe. Uh, that Lele could end up getting there. I mean, but then if my opponent retreats, it can, doesn't make a difference if they retreat and then they knock me out with the Zorark. I think I'm going to put it on the Bulu. That's fine. And then I have the energy on my Lele. That's an option. I think I'm going to feel blower my opponent, get rid of their choice band too. And then let's just, I don't know, let's just abyssal and see what we get. Uh, off our one card, we got another Fury Belt. So that's fine. I think I'm probably going to end up attaching that to my Lele, but I'm going to wait a turn just to see what my opponent does. Let's just bridge it since it's the only supporter in our hand. There's really no Pokemon worth getting, I don't think. Um, so we're just going to have to... Yeah, we're going to fail that just to get that out of our hand. Uh, I could, oh, I should have gotten that. Remember, I didn't realize the other artillery is in my hand. That's fine. Okay, that's fine. Fine. Didn't realize the other artillery was there. Oops, thought it was dead or prized or something like that. But the game must go on. Let's just nature's judgment. And yep, we're going to discard. How does that thing have 20 on it? I do not know. How did that Galassipod have 20 damage on it already? I guess it had 20 for my flying flip. So I'm like super close to knocking this thing out. But I don't have my Tapu Koko. That thing's gone. I don't have my Mew, nothing. It's all gone. 
So now I have no Guzma left. Like, I just can't get there. I have no Guzma to knock that thing out. My opponent is just going to be able to smack into me, you know, with that. And now we're just in a super weird situation where I am just going ham on this thing with a with a Lele. It's all I got. Okay, we've got a Fury Belt too. So let's just go ahead and end ourselves low and hope that my opponent can't I really should have put that other Remoraid down when I had it. This is embarrassing. This is fine. All right, we got ourselves in this situation. Okie dokie. Uh, and we've got a rare candy, all the juice that we would need if we had a Vika Volt out, but we don't have a Vika Volt, so we've done some damage. Hopefully, my opponent can't get another energy. If they can't get another energy, my opponent's in a super weird position, so they're going to trade a couple times. They get to trade three times. If they could trade three times, find another energy, they'll probably retreat and hit into me with whoever else they got and then at that point like i have to say uncle and just you know i give up uh wave the right white flag if they could get another energy this game's over because they're just going to retreat into a fresh zoark if they retreated to the fresh yep here they go they got it so oh they even have the guzma so that's it put me out of my misery with this deck oh my gosh get me out of here i want to go home where were my grubbins all game that was a rough rough go of it but anyway shout out to my opponent good game well played to you sir that was a rough go of it i don't know how john roberts does it with these lists man that just felt like super sketchy through and through uh, but anyways, you know, can't argue with success. He's definitely done well with it. So this is John Roberts top 32 Vika Volt Tapu Bulu list. Like I said, it's a little low on supporters for my personal taste, but, uh, that, you know, Hey, he was able to do pretty well with it. So you can't knock that. And, uh, you know, I mean, had I had some, some, uh, grubbins in that game, things might have turned out pretty differently. But anyways, good game to my opponent. Thank you all for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel. Let me know what you guys think of Bulu Vigavolt in the comments below. Peace.